So finally, after a, over a year of studying for the USMLE Step 1, I'm finally finished with the exam. So I thought I'd make this video and just wrap up everything that I wish I'd known when I started studying for Step 1 a year ago, and some other tips and tricks that I wish I'd implemented earlier in my studying that I think would be really useful for you. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around to the end, because I think all of these tips are really valuable. If you're new here, my name's Chris. I'm a fifth year international medical student. Well, now I'm a final year. And I make videos about my IMG journey. Okay, so the first tip I'm gonna give may seem obvious to some of you, not so much to others. You can't rush studying for this exam. It took me at least a year of focused studying to get through everything from beginning to end. It's a huge test, okay? So it covers basically four years of biomedical science undergraduate degree, as well as the first few years of your medical school training. If you're an IMG and you don't have kind of a USMLE-based curriculum in your medical school, you won't be able to study for this exam in six months. Give yourself more time so that you'll have time for that information to sink in. If you're at a program where you feel like you have a much stronger base that's geared towards the USMLE, then I'd say you can probably do your dedicated USMLE prep in about six months. But if you haven't done that, then you need to give yourself more time. Okay, so the next tip I'm gonna give you is to create a cheat sheet as you go forwards with your USMLE prep. So basically, in the USMLE step one, the first 15 minutes of the exam are a tutorial. And what people will do in this tutorial, you're allowed to write on a piece of paper as much information as you can physically remember in that time limit. And you can also skip the tutorial to give yourself extra break time going forwards. So what a lot of people do is they create a piece of paper with lots of like biostats equations. And then when they go into the exam in the first 15 minutes, they will write down anything they can remember on that piece of paper. The problem that I had was I waited until the last minute to create my cheat sheets. And what that meant was I couldn't remember all of the things that I had struggled with through my USMLE preparation. So I really had trouble coming up with things that I should put on the cheat sheet so that I could have an easy reference in the test. This exam is, is really quite a fast paced exam. So if I can write something down like a biostats equation and that saves me five seconds from writing it down and trying to remember it, then that's gonna save me time and it's gonna equal more marks on test day. So the next tip that I'm gonna give you is to use Sketchy. For me, and I know a lot of other people feel this way, Sketchy is non-negotiable. Sketchy turned one of my weakest topics, which were farm and micro because of the memorization involved, into my strongest topics. They will essentially turn the concepts of the drugs or the microorganisms into a sketch and they will draw you the sketch and show you the process and show you the picture. And that will help you memorize the drug or the organism. I actually didn't read at all the microbiology section in first aid. I just watched Sketchy Micro and that was enough for me. I did read into the pharmacology sections in the back of uh, first aid. So I found that there are two camps of people. There are people that absolutely love Sketchy and there are people that absolutely hate Sketchy. No one's really in between. And if you're one of those people that hates Sketchy and you've tried to use it in the past, I would implore you to try it again. I know what it's like to be a Sketchy hater. In the beginning, I really struggled to find it useful. It was a bit difficult for me to understand. Sticking with Sketchy really paid off for me personally in the end. Even if you don't wrap your head around some of the pop culture references, for me, having a picture in my mind that I can associate um, a drug with makes it much easier to actually remember that drug. But I have heard from some of my classmates who have English as a second language that some people have struggled to stick with Sketchy because they really don't understand the references. So if it is your second language, then I would consider not using it. Okay, so the next tip is gonna be read Pathoma chapters one to three right before your test. Probably about 15 to 20 questions on test day came directly from chapters one to three in Pathoma. Read this the day before your test or the week of your test. Okay, so the next tip I'm gonna give you, this is something that is being seriously underutilized and that is the Dirty Medicine YouTube channel. So what Dirty Medicine is, he is a YouTuber who I think he's a doctor and basically he creates videos explaining quite difficult topics in USMLE preparation. So lysosomal storage diseases, glycogen storage diseases, the neurocutaneous disorders, that's a good video. Um, and he breaks these down into easily memorizable concepts. I would encourage you to use his resources. They're free online videos on his YouTube channel. And anytime you're struggling with a concept, you should look up the Dirty Medicine YouTube channel and find if he's made a video on it, because I promise you, it will save you a lot of time. Actually, the week of my exam, I watched the whole High Yield Images playlist. The 
ethics playlist as well as the biostats playlist. It was incredibly useful for me on my test, especially for me where biochem and stats and ethics are kind of my weakest topics. All right, so the next tip I'm gonna give you is incredibly important, and that is start doing practice questions before you're ready. If there was one regret I have about taking this exam, it's that I didn't start practice questions early enough and I didn't do enough practice questions before I took the test. In the beginning, you're thinking to yourself like, you know, I want to start doing practice questions, but I don't know anything. So how can I answer practice questions if I don't know the base content yet? You know, I think that's a good excuse, but you've probably learned enough in your medical school curriculum to be able to give the questions a good go, even if you're not gonna get them 100% right. So my tip for you is to start practice questions, even if you think you're not ready. In fact, if you feel not ready to start practice questions, that's how you know you need to be doing them. If you're studying and you're just reading first aid from beginning to end, you're treating every concept in this book with the same value. When in reality, what we need to be doing is studying the more high yield topics more often and being more familiar with the topics that are coming up lots. So that's what UWorld is used for. UWorld is a question bank that places more emphasis on the high yield stuff, the stuff that's gonna be tested more often on test day. So if you use UWorld as a studying resource, you will see the stuff that's high yield more often. So for example, lysosomal storage disease questions are gonna come up more often. And if you see like three or four practice questions on lysosomal storage diseases, then you're gonna go, okay, clearly the examiners love this type of question. So I'm gonna go back to first aid and I'm gonna read up about it. The information is gonna stick much better in your mind if you're actively using the information as opposed to just passively reading from a textbook. I'm using this technique right now for USMLE step two studying. It's much more efficient. I'm gonna be done with studying much quicker. And honestly, it's, it's working wonders for just like sticking the knowledge inside my head. Speaking of step two studying, I'm actually gonna be making a video on how I balance step two studying with my clinical rotations. So you should get subscribed because you don't wanna miss it. I know a lot of people when they start, they say, oh, I would like to use UWorld as a learning resource, but it takes me too long. You do a UWorld block, that takes an hour, but I take I don't know, four hours or five hours to review the incorrects. And I will tell you that that is completely normal. If you're gonna use this technique to study, it will take you vastly more time to study the incorrects, but that is a good thing. This is all time that you're actually learning. I started out in the same boat and I felt like something was wrong with me. Like I didn't have enough knowledge, like I had to go back and study everything from the beginning. But I stuck with it, I stuck with the uncomfortable feeling of feeling like I know nothing. And eventually after about four or five months of just constant questions every day, every day, every day and learning from my mistakes, I eventually got to the point where it would take me an hour to do a question block and it would take me two hours to review. And that's still on the slow end, but I really, really, really like to review my questions and get the most I can out of every single question. I'm also gonna say about UWorld that there will be a temptation to use the tutor mode, and there's also gonna be a temptation to do it in blocks of systems. When I switched from by system to random timed questions, my score absolutely shot up. You've got to think about it like this. The exam is a very fast paced exam. So you're gonna to have to get used to the pacing of the test. And you'll only gonna be able to do that if you're putting yourself on timed blocks. I also think that for myself, I actually did better when I had a constricted time to answer all 40 questions. If I gave myself two hours to answer a question block, I found myself overthinking the questions to the point where I actually started getting questions wrong because I was overthinking the answer. If you want a more detailed explanation, I'm gonna link a video that I made about UWorld, so you should check that out if you're interested. On the real thing, you're gonna have to get used to switching your mindset from cardiology to respiratory to GI to renal. And if you're used to only answering questions from Hobbs and Guiney from respiratory from cardio, then it's gonna be a big shock for you on the test when they're kind of forcing you to switch from one topic to another topic to another topic back to back. The other super important thing is that you find a way to keep track of and review the incorrect answers that you got. So for every question you get wrong, I want you to ask yourself, what specifically do I need to know that would allow me to get this question right in the future? And for the other incorrects, I want you to ask yourself, how could these other options have been worded to make them the correct answer? 
So a lot of people will write these sort of high yield topics in a notebook or maybe on a Word document. I use Anki flashcards. I know everyone doesn't like to use Anki. What I will do is I will actually have a, a tag that I put on all my incorrect cards and then I use a filtered deck and I pull out uh, all of those cards individually. But whatever you do, you need to track the things that you're getting wrong and you need to have a system for reviewing those incorrects. I know some people write into a notebook and then they take that notebook in with them to the bathroom. So uh, anytime they sit on the toilet, they would read through the first page and then the second page and then the third page. And that is a nice way of just kind of using spare time you have to review the incorrects uh, that you wouldn't have otherwise. Okay, so the final and I think arguably the most important factor that you need to be aware of for taking the USMA step one is the mental game. This test, honestly, it's gonna be a huge strain on both your physical and your mental health. So we need to find ways of managing and optimizing those two things. There's gonna be a lot of time when you say to yourself, I don't know enough. I'm never gonna pass this test. There's too much information to know. It's too difficult and you're gonna to wanna to give up. At that point, you just have to tell yourself, I'm doing everything I can every single day. If you're answering at least one block of practice questions and you're reading the explanations and you're doing that every single day, then you just need to have faith in the process. I promise you, if you stick to the plan and you do your questions every single day, things will work out for themselves. You may need a little bit more time to study and that's okay but things will work themselves out eventually. And that's what you have to tell yourself. In terms of physical health, it is very important to keep up some kind of regular exercise routine. I recommend running to people. And the reason why I do is it's very low friction. If you have spare time, you can just pull on some running shoes and get outside. Even if you're doing just a half an hour run, that half an hour run is actually going to increase your productivity. Running also exercise in general, you know, is really good for your physical, but also mental health. I can tell you that for me, the only reason I was able to stick with USMLE studying for so long, I mean, it was at least a year for me, was exercise. It genuinely kept me sane. I would say that if you're not a regular exerciser, give it a go and see how you feel, even if it's only three times a week. And the final thing that I'm gonna say is about sleep. I personally feel that a lot of people underestimate the impact that sleep has on their studying and how much they're able to focus. I, you know, I used to sleep five and a half, six hours a night because I felt like I needed to get more studying in. But but when I made the switch to sleeping seven and a half or eight hours a night, my scores started to increase and I was very confused as to why. I know it sounds odd because I went from studying 10 hours a day to maybe eight or seven hours a day. And I was thinking to myself, there's no way that sleep is making that big of an impact on me. But it turns out that it was. Sleep is when memory consolidation occurs in the hippocampus. You're turning short-term memory into long-term memory. So if you really wanna optimize your learning, do the best you can on this test, I think it makes sense to optimize your sleep. You can do all the learning you want to in the day, but if you go to bed and only sleep three hours, your brain is not gonna hold on to that information. I also really struggled with insomnia when I was studying for step one. I would just be thinking about the day, all the questions I got wrong, all the reading I was doing, and I would go to bed thinking about step one. And that really didn't work for me. What I did was I tried to create some kind of separation between my sleep and my studying. So what I recommend is that you try and study in a different room from where you go to sleep. So your body knows that when you go, let's say from your studying room into your bedroom, that it's time to sleep. That's num number one thing you can do. Number two is I recommend that you stop studying at least an hour before going to bed. That was a, a game changer of a rule for me because it gave my brain time to decompress. And I think that's something that at least for me personally, I needed throughout this USMLE journey. I have come out the other end with a really a renewed sense of respect for sleep. And it's honestly my top priority right now in my life. And I actually think sleep is a superpower and people should be using it more. I'm honestly really thankful to all of you guys who've continued to watch, like, and subscribe to the videos. Uh, even though I haven't been uploading for at least a year now, 1000 subscribers is a great milestone. Milestone. So I think we're going to do a 1000 subscriber celebration Q&A. If you guys have any ideas about questions you want to ask me, this can be like questions on USMLE studying, uh, getting into a US residency program, or even personal questions about me, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and uh, I'll answer them in an upcoming video.